It is Tuesday 26th of November. Hope everyone's doing well. Just going to do a usual briefing for this morning and, and starting off just having a quick look at the British pound. Uh, just had some latest opinion polling coming out. You can see the sterling just having a bit of a pullback down towards uh, the lower bound of some of the price action that we had around midday yesterday. Uh, so around that kind of 28.75 area in the futures, so below pivot already. Um, just jumping straight into that headline and let's just have a, a quick look at what's going on and let me just flick over to uh, this is the head analyst at, at Ransquark and he's just tweeted the update of some of the latest polls and both of them are reflective of a very important thing that's seeing some of the weakness this morning which is a reversal of what some of the opinion polls were suggesting at the weekend if you remember I think it was the opinion one for uh, Observer I think it was a 19 point lead uh, was one of the most commanding leads we've seen of the Conservative Party over Labour so far. That was at the weekend. However, this morning you've had an update most recently by Kantar where the Conservatives are now minus two, Labour plus five. So that gap now just nine. There was another a poll I saw as well that was released yesterday where the gap is seven. Uh, and then you've had the ICM Reuters one where you've got Conservatives down one at 41 and Labour now at 34 up two so again it's this narrowing of the polls which is being reflective a little bit of negative at the moment uh, as the conservative lead just narrows somewhat so a little bit of downside pressure um, on the back of those this morning because uh, you can see here from yesterday's price action had a little gap up when the futures reopened but it was a decent day of moving from really around a 128.50 uh, almost adding a full point to the move and the, the predominant reason on the back of that was a likely higher, uh, likelihood of this happening which is the Telegraph is still running this at the moment this morning that the Tories are on course for a pretty resounding majority um, the Telegraph this morning saying an 80 seat majority the Sun I think had their calculations at a 68 majority uh, but these latest opinion polls as I've just described would be the opposite of what that's suggesting and consequently just given that was the key reason why this why the pound was rising yesterday then it's a uh, equal force to to pull it back a little bit uh, in today's session so again a little bit of a movement to get things going in the currency market uh, again just looking on a 60 minute candlestick you can see this these areas here where the market has responded to um, so anything breaking below there Probably looking at that S1, which encapsulates really around those highs you can see uh, that we had during the overnight Asia Pacific session, and then the eventual break and push that we had yesterday morning uh, to get things underway would be the next area I'd be looking at uh, as some key support near term if that downward trend continues in sterling. Uh, otherwise, uh, the other major theme, of course, is the equity market. After yesterday, we squeezed out new all-time highs again um, but Sam is back and he's a he's a bad luck charm for equities because he's such a bull that i um, be interested to see whether we can s sustain this type of move so let me just bring in the chart that I had marked up for the S&P 500 for a much broader weekly kind of outlook and you can see here we managed to just get above that top end of the uh, the kind of trend channel from May, July, and then the all-time high that we printed just back a few, well, 19th of November, a few sessions ago. We, we did briefly break above that in the Asia-Pacific session. However, the markets immediately pulled back. Uh, and so at the moment, those technical levels still very much in play for the time being. Uh, yesterday's equity appreciation, of course, based on a couple of different things, really. Um, the sentiment surrounding... Uh, some of the pro-democracy local election results looking to potentially uh, just put a bit of a break on the escalating violence we've had in Hong Kong. We've had positive developments over still um, what seemingly is progression on the phase one conclusion of the trade deal in the US and China. And then we had those big corporate deals, LVMH's planned takeover uh, of Tiffany for just shy of $17 billion dollars. Uh, and then Charles Schwab's $26 billion deal to combine with TD Ameritrade. I think there's one as well for Novartis. So lots of uh, kind of M&A activity, just helping 
the kind of bullish sentiment and helping some of that move. But you can see here that actual little blip that we had uh, was overnight in the Asia Pacific session. So light volumes, and if we just put this on a five minute to have a look, I would say if anything, that's probably just a bit of a, a technical break of a level. It doesn't appear that there was one singular headline uh, that came out overnight to perhaps break that. I mean, I'm just looking on the headline feed. There was a headline around that time that China and US trade negotiators held a phone call and reached a consensus on solving issues while they agreed to keep in contact regarding phase one. So it looks like that's when basically this story broke and hit the tape. So if I just make this a bit bigger so you can see the headlines that I'm talking about. Uh, this was the the one. Uh, you can see here the timestamp was around 158. I think it actually hit, hit the news terminal on Bloomberg about 10 minutes prior to the website. Uh, and so it was just talking about the positive developments, a, a second phone call that's happened in a short amount of time uh, with the Vice Premier of China and the Trade and Treasury Secretaries respectively of the US. And so that's what contributed to that little overnight blip. But as you can see, and I think quite rightly so, after that move, uh, accentuated, I think, by the top end break of that, that trend channel we're looking at technically to hit those all time highs, the market has pulled back and kind of consolidated, consolidated if anything. Uh, and that's because I don't think that news story really brings anything new to the table. Um, looking at where we're trading at the moment, just in a, on a 30 minute candle, I'd say um, taking into account the, the break that we had, I mean, it was definitely uh, the cash equity open yesterday on the NYSE saw a real surge in market volume and that we just fired up across all three indices on the back of that move. Uh, and so if, I guess it's more about now if we were to pull back, where, do we, where could we pull back to? Uh, so if I just move that ellipse from the news story overnight, I'd say near term, uh, you've got that initial test with the early birds coming in in Europe. Um, that level there before the eventual move highest in the Asia Pacific session and around the resistance point that we're seeing on the push in the first hour of trade on the NYSE last night. And anything below there probably coming back down towards pivot uh, would be another uh, reasonable area on the pullback. Still to say that if all things remain equal, which uh, I am at least buying anything unexpected um, looking for at the moment, then I still expect this kind of market to be supported up and around consolidating going into the, uh, the Black Friday kind of Thanksgiving holiday period uh, at these near all time high levels. So really support zones kind of seen around here and here on any further pullback. And then if we get further down uh, towards the top end of that, uh, the price range that we had through the Asia Pacific and European session uh, prior to the open yesterday. Uh, so again, not that I'd be looking to get too aggressive or or positive about pushing up again from here aggressively getting getting long but i think if we did come back down uh, i think it would be more prudent to be on the long bias still even though we're at these elevated levels but predominantly looking for consolidation as i said from these levels uh, other asset classes uh, because obviously sam's back so he can talk about his thoughts uh, it's always good as well when someone's been off the desk for a few days for them to to look at things quite fresh to see um, what they're looking at. So I'd be interested to see what he has to say. But otherwise, elsewhere in the other asset classes at the open this morning, pretty quiet. Um, T notes basically f going sideways overnight, nothing substantial going on, pretty much mimicking the movement in WCI crude as well. Both those respective instruments are basically trading flat. In the currency markets, uh, dollar index is flat, as to then respective in euro dollar sub its pivot. Uh, in the futures, it's really sterling weakness that's uh, seen that, that little cable dip this morning. Uh, and then the DAX, uh, a touch softer as to in the Euro stocks, the DAX already uh, on the left chart here uh, below its pivot. But again, I think perhaps then after that surge that we had yesterday, the little follow through with the release of that Bloomberg article overnight. So I think it's pretty, uh, I don't think it's news based. It's more just a natural uh, closing out perhaps some of those short-term longs. Uh, so a little bit of a pullback may be warranted. Uh, the other thing that we had overnight, uh, Fed's Powell did speak. Uh, so here he is, the main man of the Federal Reserve. He held his first speech, having had that impromptu conversation with the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin and, and US President Trump last week. And what did he say? Well, he was pretty, pretty upbeat, actually. Um, he was talking... Uh, about the glass is more than half full 
could continue to do so, generally intonating that, that they've done the right thing in terms of markets now expectation that they're going to hold for the time being, saying that rates at the right level uh, until the Fed sees a material change. So uh, again, keeping optionality on both sides, whether or not to cut or to uh, to hike in the future, whenever that might be, but all dependent on how the economy evolves and develops uh, over time. So nothing really too shocking. If anything, I guess it just uh, reaffirms the current market expectations about where they're at with the Fed expectations. And with that note, let's just have a quick look at how uh, the short end is pricing in the next interest rate change. So the next meeting for the Fed obviously happens on the 11th of December. Um, odds on completely here, 94% that we're going to remain on hold. Uh, the next actual interest rate change uh, is not actually anticipated. Well, if we follow this out, I think we're going to have to go way further out probably. Uh, if we get to September, November 2020. So November 2020 markets price perhaps for a 25 cut. Uh, so really uh, on hold for the foreseeable future up until really another 12 months time. But obviously these things are subject to quite large change depending on the macro environment. Um, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it for me to say on my part. There's not a great deal uh, of really new information coming out. So let me just jump straight to the, uh, the economic calendar. What have we got coming out for the rest of the session today? And it's particularly quiet if you're trading in the, the UK European morning. So do bear that in mind. And also keep in mind that um, yesterday was was relatively quiet overall, but today and tomorrow, we do, and particularly Wednesday, there's a distinct pickup in the amount and volume of North American data, uh, particularly out of the United States, because they're trying to front load ahead of the Thanksgiving shutdown, because most traders, as I said yesterday, don't return for Friday. So definitely it's going to be a US-centric session today. Uh, just given the lack of calendar cues that you've got coming up for the morning. So for the US session, uh, no kind of major 130s. These would be, you've got trade, the advanced good trade balance number, the building permits are the, are the revisions. Uh, you do though have in the afternoon consumer confidence and new home sales coming out at 3 p.m. London. Uh, and then you've got um, the Richmond Fed Composite Index as well. Uh, the weekly oil inventories, of course, from the API later on after um, the kind of market close, so to speak. A uh, couple of Fed speakers, though, or ECB as well, that I should mention. Uh, De Guindos is speaking at around now. Coa later. Uh, ECB's chief economist, uh, Lane, is speaking as well this morning. And as to Fed's Brainard, a voter, kind of neutral, leaning, dovish stance, speaking at the Fed's review of monetary policy, strategy, tools and communication. That'll be later on at 6 p.m. So uh, other than that, it is uh, a quite a, a quiet open. So I'm not going to speak more than is necessary. I'm uh, going to hand you over to Sam. Before I do, though, don't forget, if you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more daily updates. OK, guys, thanks very much. <coughs> Hi guys, good morning. Uh, and we're doing well. And uh, a quick look over at the pound as uh, you can see we did this push lower this morning, but coming to about a pretty good area, 28.75, which and it's got marked up here. And we'd really be keeping a, a watch on what goes on uh, around there as a good line in the sand. Of course, if that was to go, uh, S1 comes into play, which is pretty interesting as uh, a decent point from yesterday early morning. And, and then you're looking really at that sort of that gap uh, from overnight. Uh, on the weekend uh, as well uh, and well but below there it would get pretty tasty uh, along with this double triple bottom if you want to call it from going back to uh, the mid part uh, early part of November as well so the pound failing to by the looks of it yes it really confirm a, a push above uh, of 129 and, and, and since then it has dropped lower uh, but keeping as well and watch if we just move this down now you could call it the pivot as well but it's looking just a bit above it, 128.97, just uh, below 129 is an area where uh, you would expect the, the sellers to want to try and protect as well as that, looking at uh, a trend line from yesterday's highs uh, to today's highs as well. So price is getting squeezed in from the top there, breaking 129 to the downside, keeping an eye on that, and then literally where we're trading now at 128.75 S1 
uh, and the gap close for the pound would be the main levels that I'd be focusing on. Euro, not too surprising to see uh, drifting lower again just after you thought it might be pushing on and keeping a watch of course on what is uh, the previous low from the 14th, just below where we're trading here, 110.95 and it does seem that every time we do push on, uh, we, we do come back lower. Uh, so with that, you know, it's worth having a look to see if there was any uh, you know, trend lines that are coming into play. You can see it's relatively messy around there, to be honest. But below uh, the low that we had on the 14th as well, worth having on uh, this one from the 8th, as if we were to have a, a strong day to the downside, uh, like we've had over the last couple of trading sessions. Those would be the, the main levels that I would uh, keep a watch on uh, as well from where we're trading. The highs from yesterday that we'll be keeping an eye on, 110.39 and 110.47. Uh, no real trend lines to, to be aware of, I'd say, from those highs. The pivot, of course, this morning being tested uh, in the early hours. What time are we talking there? 6.15. So keeping a, a watch on that if it was to come up again. Um, and just have a look at that there. So yeah, this is probably worth having on here for just from the, the downside low of the day uh, and then a re couple recent lows as well. So looking at that potentially for a break lower to target uh, this area from yesterday where you can see the buyers have taken over quite a lot around 110.20 uh, as well there. So keeping a watch on those points. I'm going to look over at goal. We'll put this on a, a 240. You can see, I mean, just we, we were talking yesterday just about how important that 1480 level was and didn't quite get there did it about uh uh was that me five ticks away was it five ticks away i right, eight ticks away uh just shows how key that area was and the sellers since then have taken over and we've come back down to test these these lows here and uh since literally hitting that point we have just been drifting down so Similar to the euro and keeping an eye on the pivot because it would be another time that we come to test it. You've got quite a lot of key resistance just above where we're trading, uh, uh, below I should say R1, 1459.4. So that would be the next key level that I'd be looking at to the down uh, to the upside uh, for the, the bears to control and uh, an overall drift this market lower still. Of course that's helped uh, by the fact that stocks have been pushing higher which just seems to be the, the common play at the moment. So for gold, keeping an eye on the pivot just because of the uh, recent test that we had coming uh, again to test that now. Uh, and then above uh, here, looking at yesterday, initial low, then some nice resistance yesterday and also the R1. That would be the, the key point that I'd be looking at. If we were to have a stronger move to the downside, just got to be aware of uh, those lows that we had from the middle to beginning of the month. Uh, the 11th, 12th uh, of November, 14.50, that kind of area there. The S&P, as I said, has just been drifting higher. That trend line going back to the uh, previous all-time high that we had back in May. So we are above that, but still keep that, that on. Just bringing that into picture. One second. Just bringing that one on from May here. Now you can see uh, we did get above there briefly uh, again this morning to find a bit of support back on that point uh, as well to be keeping an eye on any potential trend lines that are also going to the upside if we were to have a stronger push you can see if we put this just down to the 60 minute time frame around the pivot you can have a, a decent area of support potentially with some lows that we had from yesterday below there the s1 also looks pretty good where we had a, a strong push yesterday following the cash open so be keeping a watch what happens on that point and then any potential bigger move to the downside just got to always have a have marked up I should say the uh, the gap from where we gapped higher uh, on the weekend and of course if that was to get filled back down towards 31 uh, 12 as well so it's important levels to the downside to the upside just keeping an eye on any these potential uh, trend lines to come marked up and of course by by the time that would get tested we'd be trading around 31.54 which is quite remarkable uh, to think about that but uh, seems to be like I said the common play at the moment to the upside uh, closer to where we're trading probably worth having on this trend here to see that getting squeezed in uh, but yesterday's high initial high just been tested as low for now and also a retest of that trend so keeping a watch on that oil couldn't really uh, we can see yesterday this morning close above yesterday's 
high. We had a couple of tests of doing that around 58, which has been that all important area going back here now for quite uh, quite some time. Uh, we had a, a main attempt, you can see, on 22nd to get above that, but uh, closing below and yesterday could not get above there either. So relatively quiet morning, it has to be said, for oil to the downside, we'd be looking at uh, yesterday's low, which is also that high from the 20th call it as well the low from the 22nd and the S1 is a real key important zone for the bears to take over would expect a quick move down to 57 if that was to break uh, the pivot relatively choppy uh, from yesterday's price action so it almost be leaving that alone and I think here for for oil it almost be yesterday's high uh, and the S1 that I'd actually be interested in getting involved in the low from today, uh, 57.84, you would have marks up for sure, and it might be the way to look at this because, like I said, the pivot is quite choppy. The only real play here would be waiting for that to break and, and using that as uh, a bit of resistance going forward uh, for a further move to the downside, sort of targeting that S1. The DAX on the open, just pushing lower, but the comeback to test that pivot as uh, an area of resistance, keeping a watch, of course, on that previous low just before the pivot as that main resistance as well, keeping an eye as well. If we had to have a, a further move to the downside, the gap fill uh, as well that we could uh, potentially see in uh, EU equities uh, as well. Any questions as usual? Of course, please uh, do let us know. A couple of interesting levels out there. Uh, but as I mentioned, relatively quiet this morning before it picks up into the afternoon uh, as well. Hope you all have a, a good trading day, uh, and I'll catch you all in the chat.